I tell you what, we're going to be the envy of a lot of people when we say, Kenny G just played for us <laughs> at the opera. It's sort of a personal concert, you know what yeah, I mean? Well, yeah, it's, it's sad when you hear an artist say that they don't like something that yeah. maybe is one of your favorite That's too bad. Things, um, well, you know, some, some people just get so worn out. Are we rolling again? Yeah. Oh, we are? Cool. Oh, no, sorry. Cool. No okay. problem. We can talk about it, but um, I don't know. See, I, it's funny because a lot of the people that have had hit records, it, it, they, they're so short-lived, these hits, that it's, it's easy for, for some of the artists to get worn out and not be so excited about their past work. You know, like, say, yeah, I remember that. But, but see, for me, see, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm a player. I, I, I've been playing the saxophone for 21 years. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. That's all I really love to do. So whatever I do and however I use my saxophone, I love every second of it, whether I'm playing in front of well, tonight we're going to probably have a few thousand people. Great! But we've played for hundreds of people or a hundred people and it's just as great because I like what I do. Is it a real treat for you to play the Grand Ole Opry House in Nashville? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a legend, a legendary place. Yeah, I never thought I'd play here. I thought this was just country music. I really did, you know, but then again, I'm from Seattle and I live in a musical vacuum. I don't really listen to much music. I don't read the paper, I don't read magazines, I don't watch the news, so I don't really know what's happening, you know? I know that you go from here to, uh, to Carnegie Hall yeah. in New York. Um, I know about Carnegie Hall, though. Yeah, I've but you do. I've actually heard of it before. Sure, well, that's a big honor, <laughs> too. Um, you've been doing a lot of one-nighters. Now, for singers, touring and, and doing one-nighters can mm -hmm. be very grueling. Yeah. How is it for you? It's, um, it's not so bad. I, I like it. I like, um, I would love to stay in town and work a couple of days at a place. I don't mind playing every night, but traveling and playing, is, it, does, it does wear your body out. So I take good care of myself and I, uh, I'm a vegetarian and I eat be great food all the time and I'm not really much of an al alcohol drinker. I may have some wine or beer now and then. So I take real good care of myself and I exercise and it keeps me consistent because it's not fair to, to uh, Go and do a show if you're not really into it. You know, no, don't do a show if you're tired. You don't want to be there, and you're in the if the road wears you out and you do lousy performances, it's not doing you any good. Okay, yeah, you make some money, but come back again next year and nobody wants to see you play. So what have you accomplished? Nothing. You're not really a new artist, but when you uh, when you did the Newport Jazz Festival and the PBS special, yeah. um, you talked about what a what a thrill it was for you to be on stage with some of your legends, some mm -hmm. of your heroes. I remember playing those, those festivals. We, did, we had a great year. We got to play the uh, Newport Jazz Festival, the Playboy Jazz Festival, the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. And we're talking about playing with people that are legends, I mean old time legends. I, don't, I, don't, I look at my name along with the roster of the people that are playing and I'm going, it doesn't fit. It doesn't look right. Uh, yet, I'm, I'm uh, just as much a part of it as they are. You know, I keep telling myself, yeah, yeah. But I don't think of it such a big deal. It's a very, it's a big honor. Especially when I can play with the people that are a bit my idols and they consider me a peer. That makes me feel good. Dizzy Gillespie come, talk, comes up and talks to you, Miles Davis or something like that, and you're going, hi guys, yeah, good to see you. I gotta get out of here, you know, or something like that. Because you know, it just feels strange. It feels strange to, to have these guys hang out with you. Or have, have, yeah, like I talked to Miles Davis for the first time. He's not much of a conversationalist, but he did say, "Yeah, I've heard of you. You play you, that. You, you do that real pretty song or something like that." And he was talking about Songbird. I go, "Hey, okay, great. That made me, made me feel great that he that he had actually heard of me." Is this whole thing a dream come true? I mean, you are a success now. You're you're being written up. People want to hear your music. They're, you're, you're two million units on an album. Uh, mm, a you're a pretty rest. big deal in music. Did you, <laughs> yeah, well, did you always know it was going to be like this? I knew I would get here. There's no question about it. But I work, I work hard. I didn't know it was going to be this year. So whenever it happened, which it happened this year, I mean, I'm totally surprised and blown away and excited. Uh, but it's something that I worked for and I work hard at and I knew it would happen eventually. Because I'm, I'm an achiever. I, I never stop. 
And uh, you'll know that when, when, uh, when I make my hotel reservations and I want a better deal and I just never stop and those kind of things, that's just my personality. And I practice all the time and you know, I knew that I would keep working and someday I would have a successful album and be able to tour like this. But I didn't know it was going to come like this. I, I, th I really, truly thought it would come as a result of a film score. I thought I would, because I moved to LA in the last two years and, from Seattle. And I said, well, I'm going to accomplish getting a film score. And from that, maybe the film will be successful. And from that, maybe some people will recognize my name and I'll have a big album. But it, it didn't work like that. It happened way, way before the film. So yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, my dream is to perform. My dream is to play the saxophone. And I'm, I'm doing it. I've always done it. it. This is just a different level. And I don't want to think too much about it because I don't want it to go to my head. I don't want to get a big ego about this. You know, I'm playing and doing the same things that I've done for the last five or six years as my own group. It's just a different level. That's all. Have you done your film score? No. Okay. So not that's not yet. a movie that I should ask you about or anything? I'm working on it. They, I've got some offers, but I can't say because it's... <laughs> yeah, because no, then it I haven't signed the contracts right. yet, so... One more thing. I'm curious to know. Wh wh why Kenny G? A nickname. You'll see, if you hang out today, they'll, nobody calls me Kenny. I mean, my last name is Gorlick, Kenny Gorlick. And nobody even calls me Kenny around here. It's just G-Man. That's all I am, I'm the G-Man, or just G. They've always called me that. So, <laughs> no, Gorlick's my last name. It uh, seems to have, people have trouble pronouncing it, spelling it, writing it, all that stuff. Hmm. I don't know why. Uh -huh. It's pretty easy for me. Of course, then again, I've had it for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. I think that's... Um... That's basically it.